Welcome back, guys. <clears throat> Another episode of Dark Souls Lore Through. So, we are now going to take care of a couple of optional things before we end up going to uh, beat the gargoyles, the bell gargoyles. Um, so, I'm going to go and uh, investigate the parish here. Oops. Let's see how much damage I do now. 400 on repost. It's not too bad. Okay. I'll definitely kill a Balder Knight. I have to deal with this, uh... This channeler up here, which I it's still my least favorite part. Ooh. Okay. What is he shooting at? Nice, just him alone. I don't think I've ever done this. Oh, wow. Well, that's great. We're going to run into these guys much later, but he doesn't respawn. Um, yeah. Oh, his buff still persists, though. Not a, a big deal with these guys. That's the epitome of throwing enemies at at a player without any real difficulty behind them. I don't know, I suppose it's probably just like trying to deter you from rushing through this area, but I mean I mean people do that anyway. Let's get this Balder Knight. I don't think so. I really want a Balder side sword. There's a suspicious looking panel door here, but first I'm gonna grab the humanity off this corpse. There's a weird person in this cell here, this mysterious cell, in fact. Oh, still human, are you? Then I am in luck. Could you help me? As you can see, I am stuck without recourse. Um, well, he doesn't sound like the friendliest guy. He seems to have, like, that classic villain voice, but let's help him anyway. Thank you. Yes. Sincerely. I am Knight Lautrec of Cali. I truly appreciate this. And I guarantee a reward. Only later. <laughs> so it's Knight Lautrec with some really interesting uh, armor, which we're going to be getting later. And he worships a a different deity himself and he's from Kareem it's not a ton of people from Kareem uh, but the people that come from Kareem all seem to be very uh, shifty in my opinion I don't know if shifty is the right word but Kareem is associated with Velka uh, as we'll see uh, which is um, you know the goddess of sin so yes very sorry your reward will have to wait. I've just been freed. Allow me some time. I'm sure he won't steal anything and give it to me as a reward. I'm sure he has the genuine 
well-earned reward himself. Well, let's go talk to him, actually. I'm going to take care of a few uh, last-minute things before uh, we fight the gargoyles. And one is going to go talk. Be, uh, one is going to be talking to him at Firelink Shrine. I like that glow that the uh, wolf gives you. Oh, miracles, I presume? You again? There's nothing to... Oh, actually, something strange did happen. Almost that there. crow flew off with somebody in its clutches. I think it was a man curled up in a ball. Stranger things have happened, right? No. Maybe not. Huh. Well, that's your clue of how to get back to the Undead Asylum. We won't be doing that now, but... Um, we're gonna curl up in a ball and try to get out of here. Mm hmm? What? I'm not up for... Accept it. Sunlight metal. I am grateful to you for freeing me. <laughs> not enough for you. Well, let's not be greedy now. <laughs> hmm. You again. What is it? Our futures are murky. Let's not be too friendly now. Alright. So now we've talked to him, so that means that we can summon him for things. And I honestly thought that Petrus would, um... I, th I thought Rhea and her companions would have arrived by now, but... I don't know all the triggers very well. So, let's see. I mean, I could go down to the catacombs and try to get patches, but I really am not interested in doing that. I think all the enemies are going to respawn here because you uh, leave the area, and when you come back, it counts as. Seeing a bonfire essentially. Let's see. Yeah. Which is kind of, you know, too bad. But at least these guys are. You know, don't have the channel involved with them. That is just... Why did I not hit the guy? Alright. Nice. Okay, well... So, La Trek gave us a uh, sunlight medal, I guess we should read that. A badge of the ultimate honor. This faintly warm medal, engraved with the symbol of the sun, is the ultimate honor, awarded to those who summon the warrior of sunlight and complete a goal. The symbol represents Lord Gwyn's firstborn, who's lost his deity status and was expunged from the annals. 
but the old god of war still watches closely over his warriors. So we have been saying that Solaire is coming to Lordran to find his own son, and the son is a, like a father, and he, he's right, he's close by to the Sunlight Covenant, where you get the Sunlight Medals, and the symbol represents Lord Gwyn's firstborn, and it looks exactly like the sun on Solaire's chest, on his armor. And it says that he's the god of war, that is, the firstborn is. But we learn a very interesting thing about the firstborn. He lost his deity or deific status and was expunged from the annals. So something happened with the firstborn, and um, he was erased from the history of Lordran. And I also want to say that we saw that there was a destroyed statue there uh, at the where I what I what I'm calling the sunlight altar. So we we definitely are. Um, getting this uh, impression that something terrible had happened and we don't know the firstborn's name um, but we know that he's a god of war and that he watches closely over his warriors hence the sunlight covenant but you know it's interesting that La Trek gives us a sunlight medal um, and we can see that we can summon here Night La Trek but his summon sign is the standard white oops um, but as we can see up here when we look at Solaire his summon sign is a brilliant color as he says uh, because he's a warrior of the sunlight, and that's the case. If you're in the Covenant, it glows like that. So, Law Trek is not in the Warrior Sunlight Covenant or whatever. But uh, Night Solaire certainly is. It's interesting. I wonder if he is the firstborn or not. Look, his, his shield, his shirt, all have the same image that's on the sunlight metal. <sighs> anyway, let us go look at these gargoyles. Did someone die? Gargoyle dead. I thought I heard someone die. By the way, I summon um, I summon these guys not to you know, help me obviously, but I did it just to show that you can summon Lodrak and Solar. And of course we get a summon metal from helping for, for summoning um, Solaire. And we also got a Twin Humanities, which I think is the first time we've seen that. Um, twin Humanities have an interesting place in this game, but it's used to gain two in Humanity. Rare Tiny Black Sprite found in courts is a very unusual Twin Humanity used to gain two in Humanity. The Black Sprite is called Humanity. I'm not sure they needed a second item to any humanity. But it is convenient when you're trying to 
do the first round of kindling for something and just pop a twin, restore your humanity, and then use it use a humanity for the Kindle, but seems weird. They should have made us fight four. And here we are. We are at the, the tower up here. We can see uh, Anne Orlando and the Duke's archives um, from down here. And at the same time, we can see, what can we see here? Uh, there's the old parish, and I mean past that is uh, Saint's Fortress. Here's the current new parish we're obviously in. There's the the Great Bridge apparently called the Great Bridge with the Hellkite Drake on it. Yeah, let's ring the bell. The first bell. halfway done with the game since we only need to ring the two bells and then we're done and of course this is this is a strange little thing here Oswald kind of appears when you ring the bell I don't really know the meaning of this like where does he come from but uh, he's also from Kareem let's talk to him greetings I am Oswald of Kareem, the Pope, and thou art a friend. For thee, a warm welcome. Cometh thou to confess, or to accuse? For indeed, all sin is my domain. So he's a partner, and he's wearing the partner's garb. And he also said, Cometh thou to confess a sin? So he speaks in an old dialect, which is very interesting. This indicates that either Kareem is really cut off um, from the others of the world, or he's old, or he's raised with old <laughs> ancient beings. I actually don't know what it is, but um, it is certainly interesting that he talks like that. And he gives you the best gesture. So he gives you absolution. Uh, which, wow, we can pay for it. Oh, oh I, I killed uh, the undead merchant. Yeah, so if you kill someone or make ang or someone, you can come back and request it. It's like a hundred times your soul level or a thousand times your soul level. I don't know, something like that. You can also abandon your covenant. Very interesting, these two things. Partners of sins and abandoning covenants. Let's see what he has to sell. Purging stone. Ash-colored stone encasing a skull. Secret treasure of Aster, the Earl of Kareem. Reduce curse buildup and breaks curse. Humans are helpless against curses and can only redirect their influence. The purging stone does not dispel curses, but receives them as a surrogate. The stone itself was once a person or some other being. So yeah, I mean, purging stones find their origins in Kareem, or at least are mainly uh, created in Kareem right now. And again, we have the same concept that we had from the Ring of Sacrifice, in a sense. I'm going to say it is where it says it was created from a ritual in order to create the ring, you know, and, and this is similar that, you know, you have a real skull encased in a stone and that, you know, it basically is used to not do anything with the curse, but to place the curse on something else in this weird way. Just, it's just very uh, unnatural compared to a number of other things that exist in this game. 
um, everything surrounding this this whole thing, Velka, Kareem, and all that, are very mysterious. Indictment. It's an online item. Slip sold by Bishop of Velka, goddess of sin. If you are killed by an invader, use this to report that crime of the trespasser. The indicted player will be added to a list of unfortunate souls who will one day face the wrath of the Blades of the Dark Moon. Well, definitely going to be learning a lot more about the Blades of the Dark Moon in time. But again, we have imagery of moonlight, darkness, you know, not white Anor Orlando sunlight, all this stuff. Velka, goddess of sin. You know, it's just very interesting to me. Homeward Bone, you have the Book of the Guilty. The goddess of sin, Velka, oversees this list of the guilty who have disrespected the gods or their covenants and shall one day face the wrath of the blood, Blades of the Dark Moon. So yeah, there's this other indication that Velka kind of like seeks out those that sin. That's, you know, um, in other words, I feel like her role in this whole thing is if you've sinned in any way, doesn't matter who you are, she and her, par and her partners or her executioners or whatever will come and hunt you down and, and, and take you out. And that's going to come into play much later. Very interesting miracle here. Miracle of the black-haired witch Velka. So she's got black hair. That's something that will come up. Temporary auto counter versus heavy damage. For each sin, there is a punishment. And it is the task of Goddess Velka to find the sin and meet out the punishment. So there you go. You have that um, description more explicitly. What I was stating about her hunting people down, meeting out the punishment for those that have sinned. But she defines it as well. So yeah, but she works in miracles, because she's a goddess. Elka's talisman, which looks like a tuft of black hair. Medium for casting miracles. This black tuft of hair that serves as a talisman belongs to Velka, goddess of sin. It casts miracles not by drawing upon faith, but intelligence. So faith is associated with all gods, you know? I mean, faith is associated with miracles and Thurland and, you know, all the types of miracles. And yet, here we have a talisman by Velka who is obsessed with sin, um, but it, it, it scales on intelligence, not faith. You know, again, you get this impression that Velka is a little bit different than the rest. Uh, we got the Ring of Sacrifice, so we can see that again. It was created in a sacrificial rite. Now we have the Blood Bite Ring. Infamous Bite Rings is commissioned by Sir Arster of Kareem, the Earl of uh, Kareem. Despite the dreadful rumors surrounding its creation, the ring is <clears throat> an unmistakable a asset in its ability to help prevent bleeding. <clears throat> Same kind of thing, but for poison. So it's interesting. So uh, Kareem and, um, you know, this, you know, he's wearing the pardoner's garb, which is associated with Velka, and he can make people abandon covenants, you know. And he also deals with your sin. Very interesting. You're not welcome any time. Thou art it is only human, human to commit a sin. <laughs> Definitely don't want to kill this guy. Greeting. I am pleased to see the preserving my humanity. You're not welcome. It is only you. <laughs> yeah, so... I wonder if Latrex speaks with like an old accent. I never really paid much attention. I We'll speak to him a few more times, and I guess we'll we'll think about that again. All right. Well, now that we're done with uh, that, it's time to go to the lower undead bird. But of course, I'm gonna want to stop in Firelink Shrine.
as I'm assuming, from at least a little bit of experience, that um, beating the gargoyles will probably trigger some events at Firelink. <clears throat> also, we should, uh, you know, do some leveling up and all that stuff. It is interesting to note, by the way, that, um, you know, in the future games, you know, if you beat a boss, you got their soul, period. No, I mean, that's just the mechanic, no, not mechanic, but, like, you know, that's kind of the way of the game. They also do it with bonfires a lot differently or whatever. Um, placing them a lot more often in other games, but, you know... Um, well, that's just strange. Um, but yeah, like, so in this game, you don't get souls from, like, most of the bosses. There's only a handful. I mean, from a lot of them you do, but. Like, we didn't get one from the gargoyles. We haven't gotten them from any of the demons and all that, so. Why, what a surprise. I didn't expect you to make it. Oh, somebody rang the bell. Wait, was it you? You never give up, do you? I don't know how you do it. Well, don't stop now. Only one more. But it's going to be suicide. <laughs> What's wrong? Get a bit of a scare out there? No problem. Have a seat and get comfortable. We'll both be hollow before you know it. I'm not giving up. <laughs> well, what are you going to do? I've already decided. I don't really care. I'm simply crestfallen. That's where he gets his name. Crestfallen warrior. Hmm? What now? I'm not up for. Alright, well, let's see if Lautrec A speaks with a dialect and B um, says anything new. Hmm. You again. What is it? Our futures are murky. I don't know if he does. And he doesn't say anything new. Unfortunately. Um, okay, let's, uh, we're gonna go to Blight Town the normal way, the way the game intends you to do it. Um, and so I'm gonna go back through Undeadburg. And we're just gonna kill these guys again. Whoa, that was weird. <laughs> the uh, rats can drive humanity. Um, and I believe that's, you know, because that they, uh, they just nibble on humans, like, that have gone hollow or died or whatever. And so they are a source of uh, humanity. Um, which is also why I think they're so big, because they have been, you know, eating humanity and souls and whatever and the like. Um, because I believe souls make you grow bigger. Um, you know, bosses... I mean, there's obviously, like, demons and stuff. There's different types of bosses, but like, you know, there's, you know, essentially these beings that, um, I'm just doing this because I can, you know what I mean? It's like, you, know, you come through here early on and struggle, it's nice to just take everyone down. No questions asked. Um, oh, come on. 
but you know, like, so the bosses, you know, apparently like sit in front of the, you know, the boss. They sit in the boss arena, and people keep coming day in day out, and they keep um, acquiring more and more and more souls. Um, oops. And that's why they grow so large, you know, and then well, oftentimes they'll have a powerful soul. I mean, they even have things like the Iron Golem, which we'll see, where, you know, it's it's been, you know, created with a soul, essentially. And, um, you know, it's why I believe that things that get so big and why, like, you know, I mean, again, there's some spoiler things here, but... When you see when you see the final boss, I mean he uh, he is normal human sized, which will be a subject of much discussion with me as we go forward. So I think what I want to do here is I'm going to get in here. That was bad time. Oh. Oh my god. Okay. Hold on. Oh, damn it. <laughs> what, I was, like, not even thinking. I wanted to see how much health I had left. I just want to do... I, I mean, I'm glad I got the Drake sword. But I was coming here so that I could easily get to the uh, basement without the Hellkite towering over. So, we can go now, but... <laughs> I definitely thought I was dead there. Um, I think, uh, Solar is still here. No. I think you can reload him or whatever, but, um, I don't think he says anything crazy. It's funny, the first part of the game, like, your actions do take very little, like, they're trigger, you know, they don't trigger things, but later in the game, it seems like, Every time you beat a boss, people have new things to say. You know, every time you go here, there are new adventures. Oh, that's kind of weird. I might as well kill these guys. Oops. Ooh, that's interesting. That guy heard me somehow. Kind of out of that thing. But anyway, that was that, um door that was locked earlier so we can obviously uh, go straight from this bonfire now down to the lower undead berg directly um yeah i'm not a huge fan of this area although i'm doing a good decent amount of damage so Alright, so we heard about the dogs, we heard about the Capra Demon, Demon, oh I didn't even think about it, this is the Capra Demon, Demon. <laughs> Somebody, please let me out of here. Somebody, anybody, help me. Unlock the door. Damn, I'm finished. How did this ever happen? Okay, so I believe that's the, that's the, oh, bye, bye Griggs. I think this is the resident, that residence that that is supposed to open. Um, this is not much of a residence, I just want to say that, just like straight up. Okay, so this is Griggs. Brilliant, you opened the door for me, thank you, I'm saved. I thought I might never escape. 
I am Griggs of Vinheim, a sorcerer of the school. I am much obliged for your assistance. Thanks to you, I may now resume my travels. Oh, hello. I'm fine. I will rest a while, then return to Firelink Shrine. I have my sorcery. And I will be more cautious next time. Besides, I have an important task at hand. Hmm. I wonder what his task is. Oh, hello. I have my sorcery. But okay. So, yeah, I mean, so there was another person in here. Another sorcerer. I mean, someone was obviously uh, collecting sorcerers and putting them in this house and locking them in here. Not sure why. We also run down in down in the depths. We'll encounter something else. Um, oh God! The fire can kill me so quickly. Uh, where they, you know, where we find a pyromancer trapped in much the same way. So I don't know. Oh. <sighs> Twin humanities, okay, yeah, so I mean, here's one of the things that I've read about or seen, I can't remember who came up with this theory, whether it was a luxury wall or whatever, but he, so this is a human, uh, a woman, as you can see by the, the band of her strap there, and she has twin humanities on her. Now, for the most part, Twin humanities are found either when there are literally two things or when there is a woman. Some people think that's because she's pregnant. Other people think it's because women have two humanities. Like, it's almost like a chromosome thing. Like, women have two humanities and um, men have one. The less of these guys I have to fight, the better. But I apparently can't. Well, backstab you. So these are the thieves of the lower undead burg. They can really screw you up. Um, They cause bleed. They have the bandit's knife, which is really nice, and they're set and whatever. It drops really rarely. Um, I can't remember which of these quote unquote residences has items. Here's one Mailbreaker. I feel like we haven't gotten a weapon or anything in a while. Oh, the trick sword. Let's read that. This sword, one of the rare dragon weapons, is formed by a drake's tail. Drakes are seen as undeveloped imitators of the dragons, but in they, but in they are likely their distant king. Tin, that is a, a typo. This sword is imbued with a mystical power to be released when held with both hands. So yeah, the drake's sword, so yeah, a, I would say that any kind of dragons around in this world today are drakes. Uh, they're not like the everlasting dragons of the ancient times, of course. And this drake sword's really nice. I mean, it does 200 physical damage. Um, and, uh, but it has no scaling. It, it, can, it doesn't scale with strength or dex or anything. So it will always be that damage, so. I can do as much as a uh, as a Drake sword right now. So, all right, mail breaker, uh, shower point, solid shaft, can pierce tough armor. Typically considered to be one of the worst weapons in the game. Let's see if we can cut. 
hype these guys out. There we go. Oh god. That's why they suck. They also can parry you. Uh. Especially since I'm going to be, you know, fighting Capra Demon, which is like typically my. Oh gosh, I forgot that I uh, that I came here. I do kind of want to save some humanity here, because um, I'm going to try to do Solaris quest line, but um, I'll get enough humanity, I'm not too worried about it. I can start leveling up things just so I can get through these parts here without my health leveled up in any way. guys out of the way. And now we have to kill these stupid dogs again. Dogs are the worst in all Dark Souls games. There's no exception. Dogs just don't work. Oh my god. I am not prepared for these guys. Guy coming. I don't want him to hit me from behind here. <sighs> here we go again. And then this is just, I mean, this is all just to go to the Capra Demon and then the Capra Demon, which I, you know, can never beat my first time. Thirty-three damage. Okay. <laughs> oh boy. 
can't wait. I can't wait to face the uh, stupid Capra. this with no drops. There's another dog. <clears throat> Thief mask. Mask of Sinners, hmm, they hide their faces, stifle their voices, and hide in the shadows. It does not provide much in the way of defense. This armor made of smooth black leather is extremely quiet. How much does this weigh? I might wear this. See if I can get away with it. Um, oh, that's really not anything at all, is it? Okay. Oops. can't wear anything. Alright, well, we're gonna go unlock this shortcut. I don't know about the whole Huh, I don't know why these guys died in one hit. Um Depths here. Which we need to kill the Capra Demon to get to. Coming up here, um, similar looking tower than we had in the Undead Burg. And we have this person here, which is another undead merchant, this time a woman. You still have your senses about you? Then why won't you buy some of my moss? She's very quiet. I need your souls. Please. <laughs> Okay, so she carries all the uh, clumps here. She also sells a poison throwing knife. Um, but yeah, it's just a throwing knife with poison on it. Dung pie, atrocious fecal waste. Throw an enemy to build up toxins, but also build up your toxicity. Although the stench makes it difficult to carry on one's person, turning an enemy toxic inflicts high damage over a period of time. We've got throw wearing skulls here. We got charcoal pine resin which is just uh, fire rather than lightning. You can buy transient curses here for a lot of money, but you can do it. Rotten pine has poison to your thing. Prism stones, warm pebble emitting a beautiful phasing aura of seven colors with a very rare eighth. Ooh, <laughs> the rainbow stone does nothing special, but can serve as a path marker and can be dropped off a cliff to judge the height of the sound of its descent. If a loud noise is heard upon its landing, then a fall off the ledge is surely lethal. They didn't employ this in every game, but, uh, yeah, they, uh, you can 
drop, drop this off the leg and I'll off the ledge and I'll scream if you die. It's pretty funny. Some humanity and a purging stone actually. And then she's the only person that you can buy poison arrows from. But uh, again, arrows have no lore. So, um... Dread, what a humdrum lass you are. Oh, weird. You can, like, pee in her cell. Um... There's a lot of theories about who that woman is. I tend to think that theories like that need to be backed up by, uh... You know, evidence or whatever. I, mean, I think just because she's a woman and is maybe close to some areas of the world doesn't mean that she is whatever, whoever people claim she is, but uh, I don't know, maybe we'll talk about that when we get to it. <laughs> So I'm going to come back here to Firelink. Um, just so that I can... I don't know. Use it for the Gabardine. I think it's probably my best bet. Got Greg's here. Oh, hello. I regret meeting you under such compromising circumstances. At least we both made it back unscathed. Incidentally, would you care to learn any sorceries? You're clearly talented, and besides, I owe you. Of course, we will require some materials, but I am happy to teach you some elementary spells. Are you interested? Yeah. Splendid. Very well. I am pleased to have a chance to give something back. Well then, let's get started straight away. Well, let's see what he's got. Um, so we have the solar arrow, we've got the heavy solar arrow. At the Vinheim Dragon School, the acquisition of the spell marks an apprentice's coronation as a sorcerer. So great solar arrow is like your graduation. It's cool. Fall control. Sorcery developed at certain by a certain surreptitious sorcerer at Vinheim Dragon School. The sorcery, along with Hush, explains the extravagant cost of hiring Vinheim spooks. This is a thing in Dark Souls 2, but yeah, there was this, like, secret order of ninja-like people that performed assassinations or whatever, and they came from a magical area. Great heavy soul arrow. The power of the magic swordsman of Vinheim is predicated upon this and the magic shield. Many warriors learn sorcery just for this. Maybe this is what I was thinking of Dark Souls 2. I guess Vinheim does support met shield and, and weapon use. Aural decoy. Sorcery used, sorcery used by playful sorcerers. Lure enemies away by creating a sound originating in the distance. The spell is not the first choice for serious sorcerers, but it has a surprising amount of applications, some of them extremely effective. I mean, this is basically a learning skull, but in sorcery form. It's, it's kind of interesting. It's hard to aim sorceries, so I mean, like, a lot of times you'll just hock onto an enemy and, like, just throw it at their face, and then you can cast your other sorceries. I don't know, it's weird. Magic shield. Shields augmented by magic or resistance to magic attacks and have higher stability. This spell makes it possible to challenge powerful foes with a small shield. 
Then he's got the Sorcerer's Callus, and then he's got these really cool rings. Bellowing Dragon Crest Ring and the Lingering Dragon Crest Ring. A special ring granted to only the most accomplished sorcerers at Binham Dragon School. The ring is engraved with an everlasting dragon and boosts the strength of sorceries. So it's interesting. I mean, he's selling it, but, um, you know, if he owns a bell and grand crystal ring, I mean, he must be an accomplished sorcerer. I mean, we'll find out that he'll, he's, you know, he's in love with Big Headloaf. You know, I mean, he's searching for Logan and he's, um, you know, whatever. So, you know, I don't know if he is himself an accomplished sorcerer, or if he knows accomplished sorcerers, or if these are, you know, Logan's and he's trying to <laughs> essentially give them back, but, you know, these are these are important rings, especially if you're a sorcery build. A special ring granted only the most accomplished. The ring is engraved with a lingering dragon and boosts the length of the effects of sorceries. So yeah, Vinheim is obsessed with dragons. Let's see if he has anything else to say. Have you heard of Big Hat Logan? Master Logan is a great sorcerer and my teacher. Both of us came to this land as undead. But one day he departed, leaving only a note. I suppose he wished to keep me out of harm's way. But where does that leave me? I have dedicated myself to sorcery. But Master Logan could find no use for me. I mean, I guess if Master Logan is his teacher, he's probably fairly accomplished as Logan's, like, a master of sorcery to the point where he's, you know, creating his own sorceries and stuff. Um, but yeah, he's, uh, he's trying to find Logan. I mean, we gotta figure out where Logan's gone. Ah, uh, yes. The note that Master Logan left. It only said he would travel to Anolondo by way of Sen's fortress. I can only guess that he seeks the regal archives. For Master Logan is a tireless pursuer of wisdom. Wisdom trumps all. Everything else is hogwash. When the curse turned him undead, I'm certain that he only felt it was the perfect chance to visit this land. I only wish that I had his courage. Yeah, so I mean, I guess there is maybe even prophecies or other similar things for in other lands outside of Astora, outside the undead asylum, where, you know, other people, I mean, he became undead and he it was the perfect opportunity to come to Lordran. Interesting. Also, he starts to indicate right here what I find to be some of the hidden truth behind this game, which is that, you know, wisdom trumps all. Um, and we'll learn more about that as far as what Master Logan thinks about stuff. Two things are required for sorcery. First, you must equip a wand. Second, you must attune a sorcery. Then you will be ready to fire away. Oh, and don't forget to aim. I think that's it. Two things are... F second, then you will... Oh, and... Goodbye, then. Do stay... All right, let's check our last few people here. And... Then, um... We're gonna call this episode done. Have you been to the ruins of New Londo below? No. Just head down the stairs and take the lift. Actually, yes. It's certainly worth a visit. It was once an undead city. You may find a clue or two, unless the ghosts find you first. <laughs> How did that nutty sorcerer make it back? Unexpected, but I suppose stranger things have happened. This guy's very critical of everyone. So he talked about New Londo, didn't say much. It was an old undead city. I mean, we'll learn more about um, New Londo. I mean, it is, you know, there is An Orlando, right? And we know that's the city of gods, um, where we're getting to understand that and you know now Griggs is saying that Master Logan is trying to get to Anor Londo via Sen's Fortress which we know is locked up right now uh, but then there's New Londo um, which is uh, perhaps the, the after Anor Londo fell 
um, or was not as powerful as it once was, they tried to recreate it with a new um, regal structure. So. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not up. By the Lord, your face. <laughs> your humanity is really slipping. But there are methods. Most fools have more humanity than they know what to do with. Now, who do you imagine will make the best use of it? Mm -hmm. Uh, you? Well, where have you been? <laughs> I'm glad to see you're safe. Hmm. My future used to be murky, but now you're glad I'm safe. Have you heard of trusty patches. If ever a man has rubbed me up the wrong way, <sighs> if he ever comes around again, I swear I'll have his hide. I know about trusty, trusty patches. Hmm. You again. What is it? Our futures are... I mean, I haven't seen him, obviously, yet, but all right, well, I think that'll be it for uh, this recording, and uh, Capra Demon next time. <laughs>